Okay, so um, this is going to be a tutorial to show you how to create this kind of outcome by um, the photographer Doug Aitken. Uh, what I've done is I have uh, come onto um, pe uh, Pexels, um, Pexels.com, uh, to find some um, landscape um, images to use. Um, um, but obviously you'll be using um, your own from your own shoot. Um, but, uh, as I don't have any, I've just come onto Pexels. This is um, a website that's just quite useful to um, download um, stock images um, for free. So if I look in Photoshop, you'll see I've already got some here. I've just chosen some seascapes to use because they've got that quite sort of flat horizon effect, which is very similar to um, the um, horizon lines that Doug Aitken has used in this work here. Um, so that's why I'm using these images. So in Photoshop, I've got these four um, landscapes I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come up to File and New, and I'm going to open up a new document. Um, I'm going to call it um, Doug One, um, and you can see already the width and the height are the same. So that means it's going to come out as a square. Um, if your um, uh, measurements, if your dimensions aren't um, equal, then obviously it's going to come out as a, as a rectangle instead. So make sure that whatever measurements you're doing, um, they're equal here. I'm, I've gone for like, you know, this obviously very, very nearly 300 millimeters each. So if I press OK, you'll see it comes up as a square, which is what we want because Doug Aitken, Doug, Doug, Doug Aitken's work is um, in that sort of square format as well. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, now, um, he divides his work in, into those like four squares. So what we're going to do, we're going to use um, some guides to help us. So what you can do is if you hover over um, the ruler here at the top, and then you just click and drag down, you'll see that a guide starts to appear. And when you get to sort of midway, it kind of almost like jumps into place. Uh, so I'm not like positioning that at all. It's just sort of like slotting this. So I'm just going to slot it halfway. It's going to stop there for me and I'm going to release it and it turn, you can see it turns blue. I'm going to do the same coming from the left hand ruler as well and drag that across and again it's just sort of jumping into place for me and I'm just going to release that. So um, those guides are now dividing up that overall canvas into four equal squares for me. I'm going to come up here onto one of the images. I'm going to make sure I've got the selection tool here um, active and I'm going to click on the image and I'm basically going to drag it over into this Doug One document and I'm just going to drop it there. Now if I press Command T on the Macbook um, you'll see that I have um, selected the image. I'm just going to zoom out slightly by com pressing Command and the minus button. Um, you'll see that the edge of the image is actually all the way over here. This is the active document, the square in the middle, but the image is larger than the document, which is absolutely fine. Um, you can also do, um, um, where, where I pressed Command T um, to make this into free transform, you can also do it from here um, through Edit and Free Transform. There you can see the, the shortcut there, Command T, and it'll be Control T on a laptop or a PC. Um, what this means is I can now move this around a little bit like this, which is obviously making it all go very, very squiff. Um, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to take a step back. There. Um, oh, sorry, actually, I'm going to undo there. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that that all stays in proportion. I'm going to press Shift on the keyboard, and then I'm going to do my adjustments. And it's making sure that whenever I move it, as long as I got shift pressed down, it's all staying in proportion and it's not wiggling and shifting out of proportion at all. So I'm going to um, come at here near the, the, cord, uh, the, the, the far right corner, bottom right corner I should say, bottom right corner, and you can see that the cursor turns into like a little curved arrow. That means I can now um, adjust the position of this um, image and I can drag it to where I want it to go and the reason I'm positioning it here is because this this is a box I'm going to be working in here with this purpley pink sunset and I want this horizon line to be stretching from the corner here to the corner there so you know if I had it up here it wouldn't be in the right position or that would be too low so I'm going to have it there and when I'm happy with it I'm just going to press enter on the keyboard and it's going to drop there for me now obviously I've got this area down here which we don't want, so what we're going to do, we're going to use a mask layer to get rid of this. So um, we're going to come down here, 
and you can see that it's got the background layer here. This is a layer with a pinky sunset on, and I'm going to press this one, which will basically create a mask layer. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use this. We're going to come up here, I'm going to use the um, rectangle selection tool, and I'm going to select this box here, and then I'm going to select the paint bucket. Now, on a mask layer, you'll see that everything's all white on here at the moment. Um, it's basically a way of painting in black and white to make things appear or disappear. So because everything's white on here, it means everything in this on this layer is currently visible. But if I choose the, bl the black, which is um, the the um, the current the current color that's selected, if it was that way around, it would be the white one. So I've currently got black selected. I've got the paint bucket tool, and if I click inside this um, square that I've selected. It will now all disappear and you will see down here on this layer that um, the um, square that I selected is now turned black which means that that area is now being hidden it's now invisible so I'm going to do the same thing again so I'm going to press command D to deselect I'm going to go back to the um, rectangle selection tool I'm going to select this square here again I'm going to select the bucket make sure I've got black selected and I'm going to fill in that area as well press command D to deselect now, I'm going to do the same thing here, I'm just going to zoom in slightly to so make sure that I'm getting all this um, um, triangle area, like so, pink bucket, and I'm going to fill it in, and then command D to deselect, and I'm going to do command um, minus to zoom out again, and then if we have it looked down here on the um, mask layer, you can see the black area that's sort of been hidden, um, and that's why we can only see this um, square now. So we're going to do the same thing again now. Um, I'm going to come to another um, landscape image, make sure I've got the selection tool active. I'm going to click down and then hover over Doug 1 and then again I'm going to drop this um, image in here. So again I'm going to press Command T, the tree, free, free transform, I'm zooming out slightly so I can see the edges. Um, again I'm going to hover over the um, little uh, squares that are um, selected on the edge and like that would allow me to twist it and position it somewhere. I'm actually going to, because this has also got a sunset effect on it, I'm going to put it opposite the um, other image. Now let's have a look. I'm going to use this shift tool to make sure I keep things in proportion. What happens if I bring it down a little bit? Oh look, I think the um, horizon line is coming down a little bit too low there so I'm actually going to keep that a bit larger. That looks quite nice. Maybe just up a little bit. There we go. So I've got. I'm going with this kind of line here, making sure that the the corner here and the corner here is running sort of parallel to each other. Lovely. So I'm going to press Enter on the keyboard to set that, and then I'm going to zoom back in slightly so I can see things a bit more clearly. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to do the. Um, sorry, I'm going to make a mask layer first. Then I'm going to do the rectangle selection tool section off that area, use the pink bucket, make sure it's black, and section that off. Command D to deselect. Oh, hang on, that didn't work, I missed a bit. Try that again. There we go. Uh, paint bucket, and so on. Now you can also see, um, if I zoom in slightly, you'll see that, that some of this sky has come on here, look, okay? And we don't want that there. Um, so again, I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to put a square around that and I'm going to paint that in and the reason that that square that I've um, created there doesn't go all white is because I'm not on that active layer um, if I was creating that um, square on the layer below which is where the purpley one is then that would have gone white but because I'm only on this one if I make that one invisible that's what I'm working with on this layer Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, right, done. Right, I'm going to do the same thing again a couple of times now. So I'm just going to speed through this a little bit. And you can follow me along a little bit if you want to. Um, I'm going to come in here, drop that down. Command T. Spin it around. I'm just going to zoom out slightly. Make this a bit larger, holding down shift. Possibly a bit larger again. There we 
go. I'm happy with that now because these are much more lined up than what they were a second ago. So press enter on that. Lovely. Same thing again. Now I'm working on a new layer. So I want a new mask layer. Back to the rectangle selection tool. Uh, paint bucket and fill. Command D to deselect. Paint bucket and fill. And then Command D to deselect. I'm just going to zoom in slightly to make sure. There we go. Like I've got a little bit of a, a rectangle, a triangle coming through there, which I don't want. I'm just going to try to carefully select that and then fill that one as well. There we go. Not looking too bad so far. Right, um, where is my other image? That one. Okay. Selection tool. Drop it onto the document like so. Command T to, T to free transform. Spin it around so it's opposite this one. Just gonna make it slightly larger to cover all the area. Bring it down, down again, make it larger again. Oh, slightly a bit more again. That's better. So again, I'm making sure this horizon line runs from this corner to this corner. And then uh, mask layer, followed by the selection tool. Now this time I can go across two boxes this time and do both of them at once. And then again, this one down here as well. And fill that layer in there. Deselect, lovely. Now, I'm gonna come up here slightly because I did just notice I think the edges of this weren't quite even there, so I'm just going to do that one again, I think. That's not looking too bad. Now then, um, what I can do, um, you can come up to view and you can clear the guides and take them away. Now you can see down here, look, if I zoom right in, you'll see there's like a little white line um, dividing the four sections up, and that's fine because it's quite even, it's not happening on all of them. Um, I'm not happy with that bit around the edge, so I'm just gonna do a slight crop actually. I'm gonna come in slightly, and I'm gonna just crop within I don't think this is going to work actually. There we go. That's not too bad, I don't think. Um, once you've got your four um, images positioned like that, um, you can then play around with the colour a little bit if you wanted to. So um, you can, for example, let's make sure I'm going to be on the right layer. I mean, this one's quite bright over here. This one, you know, is a bit more muted in comparison to that one. So I wanted to perhaps like boost the colours and the saturation a little bit here to, to compensate. Let's make sure I'm on that correct layer. So this is the active layer, the blue one. And I'm going to come up to image and adjustments. Um, and I'm going to come down to hue and saturation. And now here I can just play around a little bit with how bright or how dull I make the image. Um, so if I wanted to just boost those sort of orangey colours a little bit in order to balance out the orange hue, I'm going to press OK there. Um, let's try the one of these blue ones as well. I'm going to come back up to image adjustments. Um, I'm try to come to colour balance. And then this is another interesting tool you can use where you can sort of play around a little bit with how blue or how you know magenta or green that you create like a sort of like almost like an overlay on. Um, so I'm just going to try to enhance those blues a little bit, I think. Not by too much. I can take the preview on and off to see how it's looking. 
Okay, well, no, let's go over that one, I think, and then let's try this one. I'm going to do the same again. Let's go to color balance, and let's try to um, boost those blues a little. Oh. to make the blue almost complementary complementary with each other. I'll go with that. That looks all right. And there we go. That's my um, Doug Aitken inspired uh, composition using the seascapes rather than the, the wooded effect that he has. But I've used the same um, geometric effect where um, each square is almost sectioned up into two triangles now because of these horizon lines um, around the edge.